welcome to the 360 digit mg youtube channel and welcome back for our second iteration of the project explanation from a business perspective the goal of our series here is to instill some confidence in you and show you the different kinds of project that we have achieved as part of our learning experience each week we try to bring to you some of our brightest minds who have worked on these exceptional and amazing projects and try to show you how these projects work what the what are the various requirements that they have fulfilled what are the challenges that they have overcome right these are the different options to show you okay so today we are going to be looking at a project that is titled as bird detection and tracking for healthcare monitoring now that is quite a hefty title for a very hefty project okay so before we jump into the project i would like to give a quick overview of what we as a organization offer you we give you challenging real time projects that push you beyond your limits and help you grow we focus on the various different stages of the project methodology we look at different tools that are being used in the industry ranging from python to cloud platforms and analytical tools like power bi tableau etc we offer the opportunity to work on different kind of research papers which will be published in different international journals we offer you access to various different free tools to enhance your learning these tools include the mind map they use the ml architect assistant they use the resume mapper and of course the animated learning right all of these tools are there to enhance your learning experience so we have two people who are competing for a job right we have mr mrs a and we have mr and mrs 360 right now one of them has worked on real time projects right now mr a is trained at xyz institute he has worked on dummy projects from kegel github etc then you have mr 360 who has worked on real time projects he has attended daily stand up calls for various projects he has worked on end to end data pipeline he has done deployment for on premise and on cloud sources he has attended various client meetings and he has his research papers published in international journal so you can see the difference between the two and you can take a guess for yourself as to who will get selected and whose resume will get shortlisted right so without any further ado let us introduce the brilliant mind that has joined us today we have vinay with us vinay good evening and welcome to the session hi aditya hi everyone good evening vinay it is great to have you here so vinay let us talk about your project why don't you walk us through the business problem and the data and the business understanding part of your project okay uh, coming to this project uh, we uh, it is more likely uh, poultry industry related to pol poultry industry and uh, the business problem here is to identify identification of possible changes such as disease outbreak and unusual behavior when we seem to have lost you here hello am i audible hello hello yes now i think you are audible yeah 
so that is what uh, here early identification of possible changes such as a disease outbreak and unusual behavior in the chicks so this is our problem so what uh, like uh, here main objective of this project is like a uh, early detection of abnormal bird movement patterns so and also the constant is minimize the cost of the cost of solution so exactly coming to the overview of this is like uh, uh, we need to identify the unusual behavior of this chicks and we need to uh, send alert to the manager who is uh, there at the poultry so that they can manage this and they can also check the health of that especially that chick and they will be uh, treating that chick so that uh, like a uh, mortality rate will be less so this is how the project uh, we have uh, done for this one of the plan so when uh, in this project what kind of uh, data were you dealing with uh, coming to this is uh, unstructured data total uh, we have a uh, we have got videos and images so we have a uh, once we got this data like uh, we have a uh, uh, converted this video data to frame it will be in a frame so we converted into images then we have a uh, uh, once we got that we have a uh, converted into multiple uh, different types of uh, we have used augmentation to convert into different uh, types also okay so uh, when in whenever we are dealing with our image related data we do annotation so yeah. you must have done annotation for this project as well so what kind of challenges did you face when you were dealing with the annotation work when uh, working uh, when working with uh, this annotation uh, when we work in annotation phase so the problem here is uh, even the mind you like uh, even uh, the to be in in a uh, one image there will be like a 300 400 chicks so we need to annotate everything in that image so it is more difficult to identify uh, every chick so even that also like uh, we have annotated we have taken so many hours to do that even one image take like a uh, five six uh, hours to annotate so like that we have done like a large uh, set of data like a uh, uh, 20000 data total all right so when uh, this is uh, one of the proposed architectures for yeah, yeah. the business problem that you're working on so yeah. can you just walk us through and provide some details on this architecture yeah so coming to this architecture once we understand the business and the uh, objective of the project and the, the data understanding we have collected the data from the client like a video related data image related data once we got the data we have transformed that videos to frames and we have stored this whole data in our s3 bucket aws s3 bucket so once we save the data we have split it so after that we have done annotation by using roboflow once uh, once the annotation part is done uh, in roboflow we have moved on to the augmentation once the augmentation is done we have split the, the data into three parts like a train test and validation once it is split there again we have saved this data into our s3 bucket once we save that data into our s3 bucket we have used this data and we have connect means we have trained this uh, we have trained this data on yolo v8 and uh, we also checked on so many other models also we have checked on so many models but we have finally we have used yolo v8 and we have uh, trained the this data uh, and also after training the data we have here the counting simultaneously we also done the counting of the chicks like how many chicks are there in that area and depending on that uh, we have sent the um, alerts uh, alert also if the if it is overweight or uh, how it is so we will be checking all this by uh, using other factors like uh, we have done ocr also in this to get the extract the weighing weighing related data from the weighing machine so once this part is done we have developed uh, open cd and uh, we have your uh, save the model after that we have deployed that by using flask and after that once these all things the logic we have written in this is like uh, uh, every 50 minutes uh, we need to check uh, this uh, chicks related and it should be sending the alerts to our 
manager like saying that uh, uh, the chicks are not moving and their weight is uh, this this is what this is what so uh, it will be sending these type of alerts to the manager depending on that he will be taking care of that chick and also once this part is done uh, the data will be stored in a database and also in the client related database also yeah so this is what happens yeah uh, so a couple of questions I have here with it related to okay. some of the steps. So you okay. have mentioned data augmentation a couple of times here. So yeah. do you mind just giving us some examples of what is data augmentation and how is it useful in such problems? So when coming to the data augmentation, uh, it is uh, involves applying various transformation to the training data. To increase its diversity, for example, what happens here is the data which we which we have provided is twenty thousand. So what happens here? It is uh, not uh, enough for a training. Why? Because there may be lighting related uh, uh, lighting conditions will be different, and also it will be in a different angle. So what type of techniques we have used is like a rotation, flipping, scaling, brightness related. So we have used these many techniques uh, in augmentation and we have transformed the data so that finally we have got like a, a four, five lakhs of data from this augmentation itself. Yeah. All right. And uh, the second question I have is related to the YOLO V8 model that you have okay. chosen. So for people who are not aware, YOLO stands for you only look once and it is a object detection algorithm and it is one of the best algorithms in the market. So why don't you just uh, provide us with some details related to the YOLO V8 model? Okay, Adi. Coming to this YOLO V8, like uh, normally what happens here is that we can build the uh, CNN layers. So what happens here is for normally, if you see YOLO V8 has 53 layers of a CNN. So it is not possible and also it is not uh, the it is more complex to build that many layers to get a good result. So what we are going to do here is we are going to use YOLO V8, which is already a pre-trained model so that it will be uh, faster and also it is a, it will be giving you the good results also. Instead of using a, a building the from scratch, we'll be using already pre-built pre -built, uh, model. All right. So yeah. here, what Vinay has done is he has taken a pre-trained model and he has used the logic of transfer learning and used that to develop his solution further. So let us talk about the results here. So this is a detection that is being done. So do you mind just explaining what is happening in both the images here a little bit? Yeah. Coming to this, the left side image, uh, you have the chicks, and here they are like a 26 uh, age related chicks. So, we uh, normally what happening in the right side is the annotated part. Like, once we done the training part, uh, it will be detecting the chicks with a bonding box, the thing which we have done in the annotation. The same way, after training, uh, we will be getting this bonding box. All right, all right, perfect. And as I understand, you were also able to deploy this solution on a cloud platform, right? Yeah. So could you just uh, share your experience from that point of view? Coming to this, uh, deploying a object detection related application on our, uh, AWS it is a big difficult task. So, so what we have done here is we have used so many uh, live streaming applications also for this uh, project, but we have come up with a better solution, which also affordable for the client and also it is uh, used by most of the people. So what happens here is we will be sending the data to the AWS, there the detection will be happening and return the output will be sent to the uh, client related uh, UI. So this is what uh, how the process will be. So it is where we made the complex thing very easy by using a different uh, techniques here, Aditya. All right. So there you have it, folks. We have our bird 
detection and health monitoring project that was done by Vinay. And as you can see that this is not an ordinary project. So I really thank you Vinay for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and just give us a walkthrough of what you all have achieved. Okay. So thank, thank you, you so much Vinay. And thank you everyone who has tuned in. And as I said, this is a second iteration and we will continue to bring you various different projects from various different domains. And we will continuously show you the kind of effort that our data scientists are putting in into these projects. So once again, thank you so much for everyone who has joined.